Good morning, I finally got here. Um, unfortunately, my big team of technical um, supporters um, are nowhere to be seen on a Sunday morning. So I was really irritated by that in that moment. I sat there watching the screen. Oh, good morning, everyone. Um, hopefully some of you will uh, tune in now or a bit later to my Sunday morning <clears throat> poem, um, which is a little bit late today. Oh, good morning, Annalise. Um, so, yes, I've got a bit of a technical fog there, but, you know, that's the nature of the beast, isn't it, this year? Um, so, this morning I thought, what on earth am I going to, to what poem am I going to do today? Because, to be absolutely honest with you, probably like so many of us, I feel, or I have felt, angry, conflicted, exhausted, appalled, sad, irritable been stomping around like a little child. I've been shouting at the television whilst at the same time being completely fixated on what was happening. Um, I was dismayed. <sighs> the unhinged tyrant. Um, it's just been such an extraordinary week. I almost just lay down flat and didn't. Um, Hi, Mary. I'm Mary. Hi, Mary. Hi, Bestie. How are you? Um, morning, Annalise again. Oh my goodness, I had such a nightmare with the tech this morning, just when I felt really like passionate about wanting to do my poem um, this morning, having felt like completely unsure what where to go with it today. Um, and I just, watching that ridiculous man, that dangerous man get inside people's hearts and minds in that cultish way and creating two parallel universes i just jolly well hope they get to impeach him um this week outrageous um so i started thinking about tyrants historical tyrants caesar nero um and i was i spent ages looking through catullus and various other poets thinking i want to find the right piece because so often with poetry like it's 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 amazing because it talks in metaphor you know in the most harsh political regimes poetry has a way of cutting through that like a kind of psychic connection to the heart and and mind and I was looking for something and I couldn't find it and I ended up I went to Richard III and I thought okay am I going to do the Richard III speech now is the winter of our discontent may glorious summer by this son of York and I thought actually no probably not going to do that today um, although there's lots of parallels. And then I thought maybe I would read a poem by Audre Lorde, the black civil rights um, poet who I've read a few of before. And uh, I looked at some of hers and then that was motivated by comparing the way in which um, the police responded to the revolutionaries. Um, on Wednesday and how they've responded to BLM to the to the demonstrations last summer where they had such fierce and vicious um, cops out and loads of them and you know damn well had it been a, a BLM uh, organisation had stormed the, the capital in the way that these guys did there would have been murders there would have been shootings it was so I thought, right, shall I read something by Audre Lorde? Um, and then, I don't know, I started to think about the here and now and the pandemic and where I am in this moment. And here I am in my flat and in Barking and Dagenham, one in 15 people have this wretched virus, one in 15. And it makes it really scary to even think about going out. Um, so again, a retreat into reading and writing has been like, you know, majorly important. Um, and something I haven't really mentioned before actually is that over the last year, well, two years before, I, I decided to extend and range the, and diversify some of the things that I do as well as my theatre work and my writing work and my work as an artistic director. Um, and I trained to be a celebrant, a civil celebrant, so that I could conduct ceremonies. And over the last uh, few months, I've started to conduct funeral services. Um, and it's been extraordinary. And so, such a privilege to honour um, somebody's life. 
And yesterday I found myself having an hour and a half Zoom meeting with a grieving family. Now, normally that would be done in person. Clearly it can't be right now. And it just brought me back to centre. It brought me right back into the, the little tiny moments that are so painful and how huge they are, in fact, and how this virus has impacted on, on families in such a myriad ways. Um, and But it, it was a very special thing to be centred in talking to them about their, their sister for a funeral that I'll be conducting next week. Um, so anyway, lots and lots of thoughts this morning, like I'm, I'm sure we all have. Um, so the poem I've decided to choose is one that really speaks to me about these times and reminds me about taking in a deep breath and finding that grit that we need to keep going, even though you feel like screaming sometimes. You know, I said to someone the other day, how are you doing in your beautiful prison? But um, more than ever, we need to do this. We have to do this. So I'm going to read um, my, the poem I've chosen today is called Kindness. And it's by an American Pas Palestinian poet called Naomi Shibab Nye. Um, she's actually the uh, Poetry Foundation's Young Poet Laureate. Um, she, but, or, what, something that she says, is she, for her, the primary source of poetry has always been local life, random characters met on the streets, our own ancestry sifting down to us through small I essential daily tasks. And for me, that was the bridge. That was the bridge from, the, from Richard III to the conversation I had with that family yesterday. So um, here's my poetry gift for you on this strange Sunday morning. Kindness. Before you know what kindness really is, you must lose things. Feel the future dissolve in a moment like salt in a weakened broth. What you held in your hand, what you counted and carefully saved, all this must go so you know how desolate the landscape can be between the regions of kindness. How you ride and ride thinking the bus will never stop, the passengers eating maize and chicken will stare out the window forever. Before you learn the tender gravity of kindness, you must travel where the Indian in a white poncho lies dead by the side of the road. You must see how this could be you, how he too was someone who journeyed through the night with plans and the simple breath that kept him alive. Before you know kindness as the deepest thing inside, you must know sorrow as the other deepest thing. You must wake up with sorrow you must speak to it till your voice catches the thread of all sorrows and you see the size of the cloth. Then is only kindness that makes sense anymore. Only kindness that ties your shoes and sends you out into the day to gaze at bread. Only kindness that raises its head from the crowd of the world to say, it is you I have been looking for and then goes with you everywhere, like a shadow or a friend. <sighs> Breathe. So, um, yeah, thanks ever so much. And I really appreciate the people who check in. And if you like these poems, please do share them with other people. And I hope they bring a little bit of something into their day. And if you have a poem too, that you would like me to read, then please do just private message me and um, it'll be an honour and a privilege to read it for you. In the meantime, I imagine we'll have another interesting week ahead of us um, and perhaps we'll feel even more like we're in a movie than ever. But um, take care, have a really nice walk, make sure you don't drive to go to it, make sure that you don't take a cup of coffee with you because that will be a picnic otherwise take care and um, be safe keep yourselves safe it is quite terrifying when uh, 
when you know that you know you're going to go out there and stand in a supermarket and there's going to be 15 people of you in the queue and you're going to be one of those no <laughs> take care everyone much love thank you so much and thank you thank you for that comment Annalise thank you and good morning Graham how lovely to see my cousin I've not seen you for such a long time yeah. phew breathe take care everyone